Welcome to a sunny Hockenheim ring and the launch of this, the AMG GTR Pro. Now, if you look at the various facts and figures on, on paper, then this still has 577 brake horsepower, 516 pounds for the torque, not 60, 3.6 seconds, and a top speed of 198 miles an hour, all of which is exactly the same as the AMG GTR. So, what are you getting for your extra £40,000 there or thereabouts? A lot of it is to do with aero. Big front splitter down here, dive planes up here, working around here. Worth saying you get the carbon ceramic brakes, uh, which normally are an option on the GTR, £6,000 there or thereabouts. Those are standard on this. Up here, you might notice these and recognise something like that from a Porsche 911 GT3 RS. And we know how important they were for that in terms of just taking the pressure out and getting more downforce to the front, which is particularly important generally with um, a big front engine car like this. Calm fiber roof, which you can get on GTR, but this has the dip in the middle here. Big carbon fiber diffuser at the back and the carbon fiber wing with different struts in here. Adjustable, but then it is on the GTR as well. So essentially, quite a bit more aero, but it's what's under the skin that's really interesting. So if you follow me in here, there are various displays which demonstrate all the, the different bits and bobs. Actually, whilst we're here, just have a look at that. I think it looks really, really good in the silver. Just something very cool about it. In here, AMG has laid out some of the individual highlights of the car, starting with these, the very nice carbon fibre fixed back bucket seats. It's worth mentioning that inside the car you also get the track pack as standard, so you get the roll cage and you also get the harnesses and a fire extinguisher which adds two kilos, but seems like a reasonable safety advance. Now, this, this is an adjustable carbon fibre front anti-roll bar. It's rather lovely and very lightweight. The rear anti-roll bar is uh, hollow steel, also adjustable. But the big news in the rear of the car is that the rear wishbones have now been rose jointed to add a bit of extra precision, which we'll see what difference that makes out on track. The engine and transmission mounts have also been retuned because they are dynamic um, mounts. Now moving over here, we've got some more carbon fiber. I'm not gonna to attempt to pick this up because I fear it might just all fall apart. But this is the underfloor and particularly at the back, there's a huge amount of bracing across there and this actually increases torsional stiffness by a whopping 7.5%, which is pretty extraordinary given that the AMG GTR, the standard, feels remarkably stiff. Here, fairly obviously, we have the springs and dampers. This is the standard AMG GTR, and over here is the Pro, and you can see quite a difference because we've got manually adjustable uh, dampers, so rebound up here, and then compression down here for low and high speed. You can also see the much greater range of adjustment in terms of if you want to lower the car as well. It's pretty serious stuff. Much more, I think you'll agree, than it looks like on paper. Talking of which, it's about time I went and drove the car. Here we are then in the AMG GTR Pro. You might notice that the, I'm in a silver car. I think some of the B-rolls of a grey car just have to go with that, I'm afraid. It's one of those <laughs> launches where we're, we're grabbing as much footage as we can just to give you a flavor of the car. Now I'm following none other than Bernd Schneider, who I think only knows one pace. I don't know my way around Hockenheim, so this could be interesting. Sounds fantastic. Instantly you can feel how precise that rear end is. It says stay wide around this banked corner. Take the curves here. Now, it's worth saying that the downforce is an extra 100 kilos at 250 kilometers an hour an extra 63 at 200 kilometers an hour but two-thirds of that the important thing is is over the front axle rather than the rear because it's always the front axle that struggles with a front engine car you can get the rear downforce working really well 
because you can start the diffuser a long way forwards generally. So we're doing 230, 40 kilometers an hour, 250, so we've got all that extra downforce working for us through there. All the ESC in. Dynamic. Gearbox in manual. This is the quick corner through here. Burn is mighty through. Although trying to chase Bernd Schneider is a humbling experience, it meant I had to push the car harder sooner than I might have done if left to my own devices. And that was definitely helpful, because the GTR Pro's front end still feels, well, a little distant. But with Schneider encouraging you to take a leap of faith, you learn to trust it more quickly. Even once you've gained confidence, that big bonnet stretching way out in front definitely still needs managing, particularly on the entry to corners where you need to be patient. Once you can start steering with the throttle from mid-corner onwards, however, the car comes alive and feels remarkably faithful. You can feel how much less roll there is. You could actually have even less roll if you went firm on the springs, which might work around here, but this is the Nautch Life setup. Still rides the curves really well, so this has done a 704 around the Nordsch life, which is obviously still about well, 10 or so seconds off. G3 RS were uh, saying that it wasn't optimum conditions when is it ever. You can really hustle this car so much more. So much more precise. It still feels like a heavier car, not perhaps as lightweight and pointy and I suppose sort of hardcore as a 911 G3 RS in some ways but it's fantastic fun <laughs> it's so playful it's so interactive and enjoyable this car I love these sorts of cars these RS's the pro in this case they feel like the kind of the director's cut for the engineers this is what they really want the car to feel like to be shows what it really can do and have loads of the race car kind of DNA in it still definitely you feel that long nose which you need to pour into corners oh I don't know it's just a lift through there isn't it but it's so much faster than me through there and then he's a DTM driver there we are that's the chequered flag Probably slightly scrappy lap, I'm afraid. You can feel the extra sophistication in the damping around here, particularly over the curbs, because although you've got huge lateral grip, it just feels more biddable. It doesn't feel so edgy. You can really play it. And the grip through the high speed stuff, I mean, I was very chicken in it, but um, you're still pushing the front end, which I think is sort of. That's why I was a little reticent because you feel like you are going to push wide still but then just rein it in and then obviously you can play with it on the throttle, use all that power. It doesn't feel as stripped out and we've still got the screen in here. It's steering, although weighty, doesn't perhaps feel quite as mechanical and hardwired to the front wheels as, as say something like G3 RS which is the obvious comparison but boy is that fun so that was it six full laps that's all in some ways it's hard to know how to judge a car like this outright lap time is certainly one way to assess it but a bit like top speed that's a figure that will remain theoretical for most people that get behind the wheel price wise it's more than the gt3 rs but less than a pista performante or 600 lt so really i think it comes down to just how much of a thrill it gives you and on that basis, the Pro certainly delivers, as you could probably tell by the look on my face. In the same way that you need to manage the quirk of a very rear-biased weight distribution in a 911, so in the GT you need to work with that unusually long nose. It doesn't have the purity of balance of something like a 600 LT. It still has a curb weight of over 1600 kilos too, it's only 25 kilos lighter than a non-Pro GTR, and you can definitely feel that. Perfect then, it is not, but there is also something deeply entertaining about the way this car goes about its riotous, bombastic business.